By 4 a.m. we were well into the low desert, 200 miles out from Los Angeles, headed toward Tucson. We had borrowed Paul's 1956 Carmen Ghia, the classic he was slowly restoring to original condition. I took the exit off the interstate when I saw the sign, Tom's Auto Parts, on the left, and drove under the freeway. It was still dark, dark. a cool summer, cool desert, summer morning. desert morning. As we pulled up to the we square, the low, square, low, sitting alone, sitting alone, sitting alone, sitting alone sitting two lane road, the two lane road, I wait, I lobby, the lobby, running parallel to the running freeway, parallel to the freeway here. just here. There was nothing else around, no, nothing else around, no abandoned, business, no abandoned businesses, no dwellings, no dwellings, no other roadside no signs, no other roadside signs, besides the old wooden one announcing old Tom wooden announced some Tom's place, some 20 foot still, 20 foot still, be visible from a mile away over the mile away over the land rolling desert landscape. Before the interstate was built, the interstate was built, place must have been placed truly really isolated, truly really isolated, I thought. Even now, even now, the freeway that passed, freeway that passed, coincidentally near, coincidentally near, it looked like a ghost, it looked like a ghost building. I pulled off the road and pulled off the car and the dirt, the car on the dirt. This is where I'm supposed to, this is where I'm supposed to pick parts for Paul. Parts. I said to Mary, Paul, I said to Mary. All right, she said, all right, she said. Pretty early though, pretty early though. I got out of the car, I got out of the car. I had parked on the dark I side of the building. The dark side of the building. But around the corner, though, but around the light corner, there was light yard in the dirt yard. Wondering why the building, wondering why the building the road, not face the road. I got to close the door as I started towards the front. Started towards the front. I turned and looked at Mary and sitting looked in the dark, Mary sitting in the dark. I went back and pushed the I went door back closed. and pushed the door closed. Feeling strangely uncomfortable, strangely about uncomfortable about alone, 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 alone in the car. I went around to the front of the around to the front of the building. It felt good to be walking on the desert dirt again. The desert dirt again. This was the real desert. This was the real desert. A serious and deadly serious desert. And deadly desert. Where the temperature could reach the temperature could reach reach before, before noon. noon. Reach before noon. Where motorists still so carry canvas so water bags. Canvas water bags. Hanging them on the outside of them or out of the radiator. In front of the radiator. Cool as it's the road. For a couple of young for a couple of young closes the wall of the building. Wall of the building. Off in the dark extreme of the dark of the property, extreme of the property. See a few old see if jump old cars, cars jump cars sleeping in the cool pre dawn cool pre dawn. As I came around the corner, I came around there were no lights in the yard. No lights in the yard. But that large plate glass large window plate glass window, window on the front of the building. Will let the bright light inside the bright light 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 outside the white light 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 the light 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 I was surprised. I was surprised. Healthy vegetable light 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 she had practically no she light. Practically no light. She was energetically, she was energetically scraping the between the plants. Between the plants, she wanted to get a lot. She wanted to get a lot of work done before the dawn came. I was fascinated by this. Fascinated by this scene. That instead of approaching her, instead of approaching her, walked inside. Her, walked inside the building. There was a service counter. There was a service counter. Like the city and city auto parts stores. There were no auto parts. There were no auto parts. Aside from the counter, aside from the counter, a single big room, a single big room was empty, glaringly illuminated, glaringly illuminated by long fixtures, fluorescent fixtures on the low ceiling. I stood in the middle of the empty, in the middle of the empty floor and wondered what I should do. My hand, my hand was a card, the parts, a list of the parts that I was to pick up. There were about ten items. There were about ten, ten items on the list. The first one was a tire. The first one was a tire. I don't remember. The rest I don't remember now. I know they were all rare. I know they were all rare original parts. Paul wanted for the Gia. Find in the city. Find in the city. Somehow he had heard. Somehow he had heard about, the, city, the, city, about, the, heard about, the, the, about the desert. About the the desert. Was all arranged. The desert. That it was all arranged. It was all arranged. I was just supposed to. Pick I was just supposed to pick up the items. After a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes, the woman came in from the garden. Then she saw me. Then she saw me. Then she saw me. Then she saw me.
Oh, oh, oh. Are you here for some parts? Are you here for some parts? Yes, yes, just a minute, just a minute. I'll get my husband, I'll get my husband. She went back outside, she went back outside and just the door. In a minute she returned, in a minute she returned, eating a worn, eating a worn looking man of about I was dressed in tire, dressed in tire, old work players. Face and hair was face and hair was scruffy and gray. Something friendly, was nothing friendly in his manner as he looked me over. He's here for some parts, here for some parts, said the barman. I'm supposed to pick them up, supposed to pick them up, Paul my friend, Paul Norton. I said, talk to you about it, talk to you about it. The old man looked with the old man looked with less than the list I held up. The list I held up. He was silent for a long time. Silent for a long time. All right. All right. He said, "Come on outside. Come on outside. Come on outside." Followed him out across. Followed him out across the hard packed ground beyond the light beyond the lighted area. Where three dead where three dead cars sat. By now there was the by now there was the beginning of daylight coming down over the land. The man started looking around absently, as if for nothing in particular. Skepticism, which had germinated at the sight of the empty store, began to grow, moving from my brain down into my throat toward my chest. The junk cars did not appear to have anything to offer a six common Kia. They were not even Volkswagens. I thought everything was ready to go. What? He said impatiently, but with little attention. I was becoming perturbed. I guessed that maybe he was confused about who I was, that he had a different customer in mind. I didn't want to keep Mary waiting. I didn't want to waste time. I wanted to get back on the road. We had planned to make Tucson by noon. That was why we had left L.A. in the middle of the night. Paul had said it would be all right that the guy was willing to meet us early. I was just supposed to pick up the parts, I said. I understood everything was to be ready when I got here. The old man stood up from his rummaging and looked at me with hostility and disgust. I was abashed in spite of my impatience. He did not say anything, but as if in answer, picked up a small tool, the like of which I had never seen before, and applied it fiercely to a wheel with a tire on it that was lying on the ground with the steering arm still attached. With a single motion that I could not quite follow, he separated the wheel from the linkage, then set the tire on its edge rolled it toward me, as if the act should set my mind at ease. There, he said, sounding extremely hurt. By now I was sure there must have been some mistake in the arrangements. I must have arrived sooner than he had expected. I began to suspect it might be Paul I should be getting angry with. I tried to attenuate my impatience. In the dawning light, I examined the tire. It was not only worn down to the cord, but appeared to have been slashed to ribbons with a razor-sharp blade. There were loose, limp flaps of rubber which I could easily pull back with my fingers. I was astounded. You must be kidding, I said. All my politeness was gone in a flood of amazement. What kind of farce was it Paul had gotten me into, I thought. What now, the man burst out, whirling around to me. He too had apparently lost the last of his patience, and I still wasn't sure what was bothering him. This tire is a piece of garbage, I said. You told my friend you had some parts for him, so what's the deal? The old man stepped over some rusty pieces of metal on the ground, I came up close to me. He looked into my eyes as if he was about to grab me by the collar. There was rage barely in check under his voice. Listen, he said. I told your friend I had the parts. 
I didn't say they were in good condition. I stared at him in shock. He was glaring at me, dead serious. There was no joking in his face, no irony, only indignity, as if he were the offended party and I was the most presumptuous of fools. I began to wonder whether I was still in the real world. Then involuntarily I laughed out loud. You must be crazy, I said recklessly, suddenly afraid I might be correct. He was still holding the strange, incomprehensible tool in his hand. It looked like an axle cap, small and round and heavy iron. He was standing close enough to hit me with it, and I watched him carefully, ready to dodge or to block his arm. And he suddenly threw the tool hard to the ground at our feet, and walked away toward the building. I stood staring after him. He went inside the store without looking back and disappeared somewhere behind the counter. The voice inside me said, the best thing to do would be to run to the car and get out of there fast. I could see the Gia fifty yards away, no longer in darkness. Mary was still sitting in there, looking out at me. I felt alone and vulnerable. I looked around at the pitiful excuse for a junkyard, three decaying cars, and then I looked at the whole empty desert all around, and the lonely freeway stretching off straight to both ends of the horizon. Then I looked at Mary again, watching me standing there alone. She was too far away to have heard anything that had been said. I started walking back toward the building. I didn't know whether I would go inside or over to the car. As I got close enough that I had to choose one or the other, the man came back outside, carrying a cardboard box in his arms. It was a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer case, probably 25 or 30 years old. Here, he said, thrusting it at me. I took it because he looked as though he would drop it if I didn't. I looked into the box and saw it, an assortment of small, rusty items. They all looked like car parts, but I could not identify any of them. I felt certain there was nothing Paul could use. That'll be ten dollars, he said. He still sounded impatient and put out, but no longer angry or dangerous. Just, I thought, strangely desperate. What do you mean, I said. I can't pay you for this stuff. This isn't what I came for. I was feeling scared now, like a lost child. He looked at me quietly for a long minute, and I felt that his mind was fighting something it could not be, struggling against a problem that had no solution. Finally, his face became set in resignation. All right, he said, just take it then. Suddenly, he seemed very uncomfortable, even embarrassed, and he began to move his hands nervously over his thin flannel shirt. I couldn't explain why I felt it, but I thought he might start to cry at any moment. This impression made me embarrassed, too, and I was overcome again by a lost, disoriented emotion. We stood there, face to face, for a few endless seconds, I hugging the silly box of useless metal to my chest. I looked past his shoulder to see his wife come out the swinging glass door that was to the side of the wide plate glass window. She didn't look at us standing fifteen feet away, but picked up a large watering can that was sitting full under the tap of a water pump by the wall, carried it toward the strange lush garden that was growing there in the hard desert ground. I looked back at the old man 
I say old because even though he was obviously around 55, there was yet a lot more time than that crusted onto him. He was still looking right into my eyes, and there was no hostility on his face now, but only a fierce, pleading dignity which cut through me into my heart. All right, I said. Now I felt both scared and strong at the same time. That mix of emotions you have when there are no choices anymore. In someone's life, maybe your own, is left in your hands. Okay. I started to walk slowly toward the car, turning to remain facing him as I took the first few steps, but not out of fear anymore. I just had a feeling that if I turned my back to him, he would have vanished when I looked around again. And then I would find I had imagined the whole thing. At last I did turn and walked quickly to the car. When I looked back, he was moving towards his door out of sight around the corner of the building. I opened the door of the Ghia, pulled the back of the driver's seat forward with my knee, and put the box down on the back seat. Then I got in and sat behind the wheel. Did you get the parts then? Mary asked, uncertainty in her voice as she looked at me. the apprehensive desert, morning air. No, they said, looking straight out the windshield. At the cinder block wall of the building. You didn't, she said, and looked around at the box in the back. No. Then I looked at her. Did you see him? Who? That man? Sure. What do you mean? I didn't say anything for a moment. Then I pushed open the car door. I'll be right back, I said. Leaving the door open again, I walked around to the front of the building. The sky was blue now. There was water sinking into the furrows in the garden. Neither the man nor the woman was in sight. I walked into the empty store. And put a ten dollar bill on the counter. Hoping he could get away without being seen. Hurry. Back. Car. 